Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. So once again, after a few delays, I finally managed to get the truck out for its first run. This of course is the Artful Dodgers Ground Fox version two with carbon chassis rails and element axles and transmission. In this video, I'm just gonna go through the final details of the build that I put together and we'll get some footage of it running on the rocks here at Clevedon. Okay, to start off with, let's talk about the body. Uh, the original body that I tried to order unfortunately got damaged in the post, so I had to change plan and switched across to this one here. This one is a J Concepts Goza body for a crawler, uh, which I've trimmed quite heavily because of the rules uh, in the UK, what are now called the uh, GCRC rules, allow quite a lot of trimming, as long as you cover the uh, chassis itself and as long as you retain a proper bed at the rear of the truck and don't chop the tailgate down to nothing. So I've kept the tailgate as it is. Uh, it does overhang a little bit, so we'll see how we get along with that as we do the running. Uh, otherwise, it's a shell that does uh, two things that I wanted it to do. One, not need a separate bed, because I can't be bothered with that. Uh, second of all, I wanted it to be wide enough to cover the full sliders on the Artful Dodgers conversion, which it does very successfully. Uh, and I also happen to think that when it's cut down like this, it does look quite good. It's got a quite an aggressive look. Uh, which I'm quite enjoying so far. Uh, we'll see how it performs when it's actually running across the rocks. I'll just mention as well that this body includes one of the pieces that Artful Dodgers supplied to me free of charge. If you remember, the uh, chassis kit itself was supplied to me free of charge for review purposes. Uh, and they also included this piece here, which I think is quite popular. It's their own roof rack with a winching pulley, uh, which is a very nice piece made out of aluminium and which bolts down quite nicely onto the roof of this Goza body shell. Next job is to get this body shell off and take a look at the chassis. With the body off now, I'll start off with a few of the small tweaks I did to the chassis setup on this truck. Um, I started off, as you probably remember, by copying the combination of the Artful Dodgers manual and Artful Dodgers own photographs on their website because there is no dedicated manual for the Enduro conversion uh, and that was very good overall. I was very pleased with how I built that. Just made a few tweaks uh, just to get the um, right height and some other details right for the, the shocks that I'm using. So I am using, as you'd expect, the Element shock absorbers. They are, in my opinion, about as good a uh, crawler shock absorber as you're going to find on the market. Um, and I just adjusted the mounting holes a little bit to make sure that I was getting a good degree of travel. So on the front end, the main thing I was looking at was to make sure that when it's fully compressed, I don't clash against the steering link. It's a bit clearer to see from the front. That full compression now, there's enough clearance there that the steering link doesn't hit the chassis and it won't do that at full lock either way also. So the best way to do that with this design of chassis is just to make sure that you put the mounting pieces, uh, mount the shocks in a position where you get uh, the right amount of compression uh, and also the right amount of extension. Again, at the rear, I tweaked the chassis mounting, the shock mounting position a little bit. I wanted the rear to not go down as low as the front at full compression, uh, and also to have plenty of downward travel without anything binding up. Another tweak that I made compared to the first time I built my Grand Fox version 1.2 is to uh, clock the rear axle. Uh, so you should be able to see here that the rear axle is actually angled quite a bit. Uh, the drive shaft now points up more at like 45 degrees rather than the original which is nearly horizontal. This helps you with rear clearance and that's combined with uh, factory team high clearance links on both the top and the bottom and again at full compression the uh, links don't clash so you get full compression on the suspension as you would desire. The other thing I ended up doing some tweaking on was the body mounts. Now Artful Dodgers for the version 2 chassis have included these body mounts that are based on a bent aluminium plate and they come with a screw and a thumb nut as the mounting method. This is the nut here. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about that when I built the truck in the first place but what I will say is these bent aluminium mounts are structurally much better. You can actually bolt the shock mounts into them if you wanted to whereas you couldn't really have done that with the old 3D printed mounts and they do supply two kinds of aluminium bent mount in the package. This one, which is currently on the rear, actually has a little bit of an offset on it, and this one currently on the front, just mounts directly above the screw holes. Uh, and with a little bit of adjustment front and rear, I've managed to get these sorted so that the J Concepts Goza shell actually mounts right down, almost level 
with the top of the shock towers here, uh, getting it down as low as you can possibly have it within the rules, and then getting the rear even lower so that the bed of the that goes a body sits just behind the shock tower there as well. In terms of drivetrain, this is just the standard element enduro gearbox using the fox belly mount that Artful Dodgers created, which rotates the gearbox around. I've got the maximum overdrive in this, which overdrives the front by something in the region of 12%. Um, that works out well for me. Uh, the axles themselves are just the standard straight enduro axles. I am running some additional brass around the front knuckles. This brass comes from a brand called Treel. Uh, I've got both the steering knuckles and the C-hubs made of brass. The reason I have the brass on the front end only is because when I'm setting the truck up I'm looking to have the centre of gravity somewhere around the front of the front skid. Uh, you should see that it just about wants to tip over to the front if you lift it up at the front of the skid and that's all intended to kind of help with the concept of as long as the skid gets to the obstacle the car will then, the truck will then tip down uh, and be able to progress and further on and that's another one of the reasons why you tend to have the high clearance links at the rear which again is designed to increase clearance uh, to the rear as you go over that obstacle. Tires on this one are my favoured setup for UK conditions. These are Pro-Line Crawlers, a class two size tire at 4.75 inches in their softer Predator compound. And these have Pro-Line's dual stage foams in them. And these wheels are a heavy aluminium wheel, uh, which is available from lots of sources, but this particular one came from Fast Tracks, which is a brand that's quite widely available in the UK. Final thing I'll mention is the electronics package. Now my original plan was just to switch over the same electronics that I had in the version 1.2 Grand Fox. In that truck I had a Hobbywing Axe 540L brushless combo. As you can tell I don't have that in this anymore. Um, originally I did find with the 540L in the first Grand Fox that the cam was a little bit too long for the space available on the chassis and I had to rise the motor mount up to make it clear the links. Uh, this time around rising the motor mount wasn't enough for it to clear the other items, in particular the metal plate that the speed controller mounts on. So in the end I switched out to a brushed system uh, which is much more compact. This is a 540 sized surpass motor, 16 turn 5 pole motor. This is the uh, Hobbywing 1080 speed controller which I'm sure a lot of you already recognise uh, with a Futaba receiver there. What's nice about this setup I've got no concerns whatsoever about the drivability of a brush setup, but also on this fairly small metal electronics plate, actually it all fits in very nicely, much nicer fit than the large axe speed control would have been. The other thing to mention about the electrics is the servo. This is just a Power HD 1812 MG servo, uh, a very inexpensive servo, about £25, but has all the torque and speed that I need to get around any course. At the end of the day, your servo is not going to move a rock, so you've got to have a little bit of sympathy, and this level of servo works absolutely fine for me, and it's waterproof to boot. That's enough chat about the car, let's get this thing on the rocks.
Okay, so that's enough driving for now. Time for me to head home. Hope you found the video useful. Uh, as ever, if you give me a like or a subscribe, it really helps me with the material on the channel. If you've got any questions, please do leave them below. I'm going to apologise for my driving. I'm a bit rusty and I can assure you it's very tricky to drive and film yourself driving at the same time. This chassis certainly is a lot more capable than I've made it look. As ever, thank you very much for watching.